Now, before I begin, I wanted to make one thing clear, and that is that while I decided to stop releasing content critiquing Giorgiani, his most recent video is definitely worth discussing. I also regret apologizing to him, for he is truly an utter liar and deceiver. Thus, I have decided to release this video to finally put Giorgiani in his place. In his most recent video, Jason Reza Giorgiani released a response video to Reza Hazali in which he attempted to justify the racial, political, and intellectual nonsense he has spewed over the past two years. Because I am not a Persian speaker, I had a friend of mine translate parts of the video for me. Firstly, I would like to say that Mr. Yes, Mr. and not Doctor, for he is not deserving of that title, Giorgiani is a highly paranoid, delusional, and dishonest individual. He is not at all a man of inherent honesty and integrity as many believe, or rather have been led to believe. The most important lie from, well quote unquote lie from Mr. Hazali he attempted to address was in regards to uh, the, his claims about the genetic makeup of Iranians and this is what I will focus for this video as I will not comment on the rest of his nonsense but will highlight examples of instances where he proved to be an utter coward when confronted with the truth. Giorgiani does not even have the audacity to confront me and has always refused to openly de debate me for he is truly a coward. If a so-called Iranian nationalist leader cannot confront a Pakistani bastard in his own words, then what kind of a leader is he? He accused me of being a bastard and a liar, yet provided no credible evidence to back these claims of his. In my previous videos, I decisively confronted and debunked all of the ridiculous nonsense which comes out of this so-called scholar's mouth and... Uh, I did so with great precision. All of my points were well evidenced and backed up by scientific research. One of the earliest claims Giorgiani has made is that Iranians were at one point Europeans and genetically similar to Northern Europeans, specifically Nordics, prior to the Arab invasion as well as the uh, devastations the Mongols wrought upon Iran. Now while the Proto-Indo-Europeans and the Proto-Indo-Iranians would cluster closer to uh, modern-day European populations than to Iranians and South uh, and uh, uh, South Central Asians. The Iranian, the rather the Indo-Iranians, did not emerge until a process of admixing in Central Asia and South Asia occurred. In the case of Iranics, they emerged after a Sintashta-derived steppe population admixed with the, the native uh, Iranian uh, farmer derived populations of the BMAC whereas the Indo-Aryans emerged after there was a hybridization between the same Proto-Aryan Sintashta source and the native largely Iran derived population of the Indus Valley civilization. The process of the emergence of the Iranics can be queeped as BMACization what Jason has constantly not understood time and time again is that there is BMAC derived vocabulary in the Indo-Iranian languages and for this reason his assertions of a northern European, uh, Persian and Iranian people until the Mongol and Arab invasions is not uh, factual at all. Yet he claims that it is factual because he does not understand this specific point. Furthermore, Jason has also claimed and openly stated multiple times that he, as the head of an Iranian government in the future, would genetically re-engineer the Iranian population into a European one within a generation or two. And he said while this may, may be painful, it is a necessary must for Iran moving forward. That shows the extent to which he is deluded and the utter and complete lunacy of this individual's mind. It should be noted that uh, Jason has been confronted on this topic many times by myself and each and every time he has been proven wrong. 
He has claimed that Iran never produced a hegel because of the impacts of the Arabs and Mongols on the Iranian genome, the negative impacts in his word, when in reality there has been no such uh, impact at all. In fact, uh, Arab-derived admixture in Iran, in most of Iran, doesn't even exceed exceed 5% at the most and is only around uh, at an average of 1-3%, to whereas Mongol or Turkic influence does not exceed uh, more than uh, around uh, what one to three percent uh, in again in most of the Iranian population with the exception of uh, the Turkic speaking populations of Iran another claim he has made on many occasions is that the native Iranian populations which preceded the arrival of the Bimakai's Iranics were largely wiped out and has implied that they were useless individuals in a previous conversation with a friend of mine in fact in one instance he went as far as claiming that the Scythians were the ones who admixed with the Iranians and prevented them from degenerating due to admixture with the Elamites and other native populations of Iran without realizing, he said this without realizing that it was the Elamites and other native regional populations from whom the Achaemenids derived most of their culture from. Another thing to note is that Jason claimed that the Scythians were largely of Germanic stock when in reality 20 to 50 percent of the Scythian genome was derived from East Asian sources. Regardless, Semitic and Asiatic related admixture in Iran constitutes no more than 5 to 10 percent of the total of the Iranian genome and usually the average is uh, no more than 5 percent and now this uh, again uh, Jason continues to deny and claims that most uh, modern Iranians are largely of Arab and Mongol stock how can he continue to claim this in light of all the recent evidence we have and in light of all the recent studies we have seen the most notable of these studies are uh, Lazaridis's uh, study from 2016 Genomic Insights into the Origin of Farming in the Ancient Near East, which was published in Nature. Narhasimhan's study from uh, March 31st of this uh, year, which has taken a look at the genomic uh, formation of South and Central Asia. Damgard's study from this year as well, which has taken a look at the uh, genomes across the Eurasian steppe. And it was actually from that study that a population very close to the Sogdians, as well as the Quaresmians was uh, sequenced, the Kongju people, and these people largely reflect what the average, uh, likely, I mean, rather I meant likely reflect what the average Quaresmian as well as Sogdian genome was without the uh, minor uh, East Asian uh, influence these individuals harbor, which numbers no more than 5 to 10 percent. And finally, Wang et al.'s uh, study from this year titled The Genetic Prehistory of the Greater Caucasus. Also, Jason has never made a single mention of and likely forgot about or does not know enough about the Iranian intermezzo, a period in which native Iranian dynasties dominated much of the plateau and expelled the Arab invaders. In fact, Arab settlements in Iran were heavily limited to Khorasan and parts of western uh, the western Iranian plateau now even the settlements in the western Iranian plateau were largely uh, non-existent by the 10th century and the reason for this was that between the 8th and 9th century there were many nativist revolts influenced by local Zoroastrian traditions and these rebels uh, managed to wipe out most of these Arab settlers and didn't even spare the Islamic con converts, I mean rather the Iranian converts to Islam, wiping out Islamic villages as well. Much of this, uh, uh, actually, much of the evidence for this has been discussed by Patricia Crone in her book, The Nativist Uprisings of Early Islamic Iran, Rural Revolt and Local Zoroastrianism. Thus, once again, Jason has been proven to be an utter con man of an individual. Moving on, Jason was confronted in early February on his Facebook account by a close friend of mine about these delusions of his. In that particular post, he claimed that the Achaemenids were European monarchs. When he was constantly exposed for the fraud he is, he continued to 
tiptoe around my friend's arguments and made irrelevant and invalid counter-arguments. Finally, when my friend had had enough and deactivated his Facebook, Jason had a premature celebration. But then, when my friend returned a few days later, he utterly humiliated him. And then this resulted in Jason to not post on any of his social media platforms for an entire month and it led to deleting him again uh, it led him to delete much of his blog which he had also done so prior when uh, I had confronted him uh, in November now this was not the first time Jason backed down during a confrontation I also confronted him uh, on one of his videos in mid January and uh, many of my followers supported me as well and again he uh, backed down and blocked all of us before disabling the comments he is truly a coward for he cannot even defend his own ludicrous views and claims against uh, individuals who have no influence outside of the internet also Jason is not mentally stable now many people may not uh, agree with this views and I understand you know they may be close associates of this man but Firstly, you have to understand that he has been constantly switching allegiances to opposite ends of the political spectrum. Initially, he supported the alt-right, an organization he helped found, and he also praised Adolf Hitler during his association with this organization. However, once he was disowned and exposed by the organization's true leader, which uh, was uh, which is uh, Jason Spencer he immediately switched his allegiances to the Zionist movement and declared himself an Iranian Zionist thus once again proving his inability and indecisiveness to lead the great nation that is Iran Shar overall Georgiani has proven to be a mental and unstable individual who would not hesitate to stab and has not hesitated to stab Iranians in the metaphorical back when given the chance to improve his own ambitions he has only resorted to insults whenever confronted by me and he fears me and my followers deeply for we have truly exposed this con artist and now patriots like Reza Hazeli have also begun exposing this maniacal lunatic. It is my conclusion that because of all of this, Jason cannot er lead Iran and is not worthy of leading the Iranian people, for he is a complete and utter liar, deceiver and con man. I can guarantee all of you that Jason will never confront me for I and my followers have been his greatest adversaries and he knows that any direct confrontations with us will result in his complete and utter humiliation. Who does he think he is to hand over the culture of Iranians to Europeans by going on European nationalist media platforms and openly declaring that Iranian heritage belongs to Europeans and only to Europeans? His understanding of history is also limited for Iranians continued to thrive long after the Arab invasion and produced many great scholars. Men like Omar Hayyam, Al-Khwarizmi, Al-Tusi, Abu Faraj, Al-Isfahani, Abu Rehan, Al-Biruni, Al-Razi, the poet Rudaki, Ferdowsi, Mullah Sadra, Bahaaldin Al-Amili, Ruzbe, Pure Dadui, who was later known as Ibn al-Muqaffa. Al-Farabi, Nizam al-Mulk, Fakhr al-Din Razi, Al-Ghazali, Nasser Khusru, Al-Biruni, Jabir ibn Hayyan and many more. There is no need for me to go on, for this man is truly an utter humiliation and di disgrace to the Iranian Vatan. All ancient depictions of Iranians since the Achaemenid era display a peoples which were phenotypically similar to modern Iranians. Sure, Eastern Iranians have more European-like features, but nonetheless, they would still cluster with modern-day South Central Asians, such as the Yagnobi people and Tajiks who are not significantly East Asian admixed. Yet Jason fails to realize this and time and time again he attempts to claim that Parthian and Sogdian art are, re are representative of all Iranic speakers throughout all eras. Thus Jason has been decisively checkmated again by myself and he will once again run away from me as he has done so this entire time.
he is a complete and utter disgrace to all or any self-respecting Iranians and he should not at all be taken seriously by any Iranian nationalist. A final word I wanted to say was that anything any of you want me to address that he has said, please let me know in the comments. I will decisively confront him as I always have and put a rest to his deluded claims and his utter paranoia and lack of mental stability. If he cannot confront a random Pakistani who is not even an Iranian, how can he confront the enemies of Iran, Shar? How can he lead Iran if he has been constantly and decisively outled by myself in terms of leadership qualities? He cannot and shall not ever lead Iran for if a, if a day shall come when he ascends to the throne of Persia, Persia shall fall into complete and utter despair. I support Reza Hazali's stance against him and if Mr. Hazali watches this video, he will know that he has a very staunch supporter in his struggle to expose this utter disgrace of an individual. The disgrace that is Jason Reza Georgiani. I would like to thank uh, those of you who've stayed uh, until the end of this uh, video. Thank you and take care.